Okay, the next concept I want to illustrate here is the introduction of something new called the contribution margin income statement. This is a new form of income statement that you would not have been exposed to in financial accounting. But what I want to do first is start by just reviewing the traditional income statement, which we would normally call a gross profit income statement that looks like you see in front of you here. We've got sales revenue, less cost of goods sold will give you gross profit, less operating expenses will give you operating income. But what happens is, and what this particular diagram doesn't uh, quite do effectively, is um, that built in each of these uh, cost of goods sold and operating expense numbers, there are actually variable costs and fixed costs. And so what you'd actually see uh, in a traditional uh, costing statement, even though it wouldn't be broken out that way, it would look something like this. So we would have sales, and then we would have our uh, cost of goods sold, but in that we would have variable cost of goods sold, and then fixed cost of goods sold, and the sum of those would give you total cost of goods sold. And then if we take uh, sales minus cost of goods sold, of course, you'd end up with gross profit, which you're used to. And then you would have your operating expenses and included in your operating expenses would be variable OPEX and fixed OPEX. And that will give you your total operating expenses. And then when you take your gross profit minus your operating expenses, you end up with operating income, right? Which is what we have in the statement above. But when it comes to this thing called contribution margin, we mix things up a little bit. So we'll have our sales, just like shown in the diagram above, but then we have variable expenses. And in variable expenses, we'll actually include any variable cost of goods sold, and then any variable operating expenses. And if we were to have a total for those, and then that gives us something called the contribution margin. And then we would have our operating expenses. But instead of operating expenses, here we have a section for fixed expenses, which can include both uh, fixed cost of goods sold and fixed operating expenses the total of which will give you your total fixed costs. But then when you take contribution margin minus fixed costs, you still end up with operating income. And except in situations where we have inventory, these two operating incomes would be the same, a little star here, if the number of units produced equals sold. And we'll deal with the complexity where we have a differing beginning and ending, ending inventories later. What this shows us though, is we end up at the same point and we're not playing around with any numbers, but we're just moving things around to say, okay, I want to include variable operating expenses as part of variable costs, and then fixed cost of goods sold over here as part of fixed costs, fixed expenses. Now what contribution margin is, it's simply the amount that we have after covering our variable costs that will contribute to covering fixed costs. That's what contribution margin is. The other concept that I'm gonna to jump to is at the end uh, here that deals with taking our contribution margin statements a bit further into what we call segmented uh, statements. So this is learning objective 3.5, segmented income statements. So you can see what we have here is a, a basic uh, income statement in contribution margin format where we have sales minus variable costs gives you contribution margin. And so in this case, we have 364,000 in sales, 83,000 variable costs, giving us a contribution margin of 281,000. This is how much we have left after covering variable costs to contribute to covering our fixed costs, right? And then minus fixed costs is operating income, no surprise there. But what we have, this is actually for an entire business that can include multiple uh, service lines or you can have a business with multiple locations or multiple divisions. And so seeing this 364,000 in sales, for example, is actually broke up into, as you can see below, boarding and lessons. So what this segmented income statement allows us to do is break our income statement up, our contribution margin statement up into the two segments, right? These are the segments or business units. So this 364,000 in sales is broken up into 115,500 for boarding and 284,500 for lessons. You could see the variable cost is broken up into 36 and 47, no problem. 
That gives us contribution margin for each segment. But then instead of subtracting just fixed costs, see in this 239,000 of total fixed costs, I'm just gonna put this over here, 239,000 total, right, T, total fixed costs, that includes basically what we call traceable fixed costs, and then what we call allocated or common fixed costs. And of the traceable fixed costs, we know that for the boarding and for the lessons, right, they're two different amounts. So for the boarding, the, t the fixed costs are 27,000, and for the lessons, it's 45,000. So we have 27, 45, and then the remaining uh, common costs are 167,000. But what's important to note here is if we want to evaluate the performance of the particular business segment, we have to remove the common fixed costs or the allocated fixed costs that can include head office expenses, CEO salaries, the accounting department for the entire company, those kinds of things. So what we do is when we subtract the traceable fixed costs, this gives us something in the interim instead of operating income where we have segment margin. Right? Or if you want to think of it as segment income, that's okay, or segment operating income, that's okay. But this is the operating income for each of the business segments. Right? So that's 52000 for the boarding and uh, 156500 for the lessons. And then you can see that while we have the two segments, we also have a column for the total. And then this 167000 is not allocated to the other departments and is put in the totals column only as a lump sum to then arrive at the operating income of 42,000, which is the same as up here, but just down here. So that's what a segmented income statement looks like.